this now let me show you what what is the this uh, if you grow a macan in a macanke agar the e coli all e coli all your five type of e coli you develop pink but when you develop in another media known as the sorbitol macanke agar where the not a state of lactose they have put in the sorbitol so because of the this e coli o157 a7 does not ferment the sorbitol other four will ferment but eh you see that it intero hemorrhagic e coli will not ferment and they will appear as a pale colony white colony but all other as they appear as a pink colony if you subculture again back to the macanke they will again appear as a pink if you this is the this will be if it is this is a e157 h7 it will appear pink on macanke agar but pale on sorbitol agar if you subculture over there it will again appear pale if you come back come back to this you can again again pink so this is the this is a way of diagnosis you can culture on sorbitol agar they appear pale you culture on macanke they appear pink the same organism differentiating from other other all will appear pink on this agar as well except this o157 h7 let me show you my picture this is uploaded by myself and you can found this is a publication which i have done where we have found the first case of enterohemorrhagic coccoli in nepal and you can see this pale colony and pink colony this is sorbitol macanke agar where this pale colony is actually this eh ec that o157 a7 enterohemorrhagic e coli other these are the normal e coli other four type that is enterotoxigenic enteropathogenic enteroaggregative or enteroinvasive that is e coli but this is enterohemorrhagic e coli and if we subculture at macanke normal macanke agar it appears as a pink when back sulfur is on the sorbitol macanke it appears pale so in this way it was diagnosed actually by myself and it is a first case from nepal now let's come to the kaplan book we know stearic coli is gram negative of facultative anaerobe oxidase negative it is a lactose fermenter okay this can be grown in the macanke agar or emb agar they can they tra their transmission is normally may colonize the vagina urethra as well as colon the intero hemorrhagic strains transmission mainly the bovine fission through occur okay and if you let's revise the diseases it will cause the disease of due to fimbriae or pili urinary tract infection due to capsulated one will cause neonatal septicemia and meningitis septicemia due to its endotoxin that demrebel the endotoxic shock due to its toxin enterotoxin genic toxigen e coli will cause travelers diarrhea enteropathogenic e coli will cause this in the pedratic diarrhea you can say in the diarrhea in babies in developing country intro invasive diarrhea will cause invasive diarrhea like the blood inflammatory diarrhea blood pus fever abdominal pain intro aggregative diarrhea will cause diarrhea in adult adherence fimbriae count induced interleukin 8 this is diarrhea in adult this was not discussed in your first step because it is not very much important but this intro hemorrhagic e coli which i have repeatedly did discussing is the most common bovine feces and petting juice they have a toxin called verotoxin which is sigalai toxin decrease the proteins in this by inhibiting the 60x ribosomal subunit there is no fever no pus cell blood in the stool non fermental of sorbitol which i have seen sorbitol agar they will be appear as a pale in color may progress to hemorrhagic colitis and hemolytic uremic syndrome the problem is that if you give antibiotic in this case there will increase risk, risk of this hemolytic uremic syndrome and your patient may die so if you diagnose the case of ehc that is necessary for the supportive treatment and observe the patient but it because it may goes into the deadly complication like hemolytic uremic syndrome we will even discuss in detail in kaplan section revision okay when we study kaplan but at present this much information will be able to diagnose any entrance exam including usme all over the world thank you